Welcome to the noon hour here on the SDH Network, and it's time since it is the postseason here in the state of Georgia. Time to go Soccer's in Session Live, presented by our friends at Kaiser Permanente at KP Georgia on the 280-character app. John Nelson here, hanging out with you for however long we go, because it is the first day of round two of the GHSA playoffs on the boys' and girls' sides. And the second half of the show, we're going to be previewing our matchup from – tonight here on the SDH Network, and you can catch that, and you can catch all of our games on uh, soccerdownhere.mixler.com. It's our Mixler site. Mixler is where we have channeled all of our live events this year, so you can either download the Mixler app, uh, go to uh, MIXLR. You can either download the Mixler app and then do your search and set your notifications like you're following Soccer Down Here, or you can go on the web and listen to it on the web right here at that website, soccerdownhere.mixler.com. And you can catch us with all of our live content. The content is archived there and doesn't matter uh, how long back, how long it was when the event happened, how long back. That was not, not good English, but uh, however far back in the, the, the uh, library it was here in 2024, if, uh, if we were able to uh, go through the technological gremlins and have it on the air, then it's there. So all of the broadcasts so far this season. Are on the uh, are on the network, and you can, like I said, you can go and listen to the archives right there on our Mixler site, or you can uh, you can download the Mixler app, and you can catch us live, and you can wander around. You can listen to us twice a week if you want, twice a month if you want, two thirty in the morning if you're trying to chase after something in the fridge, and you can uh, look at anything there, and you can follow along with all of the adventures that we have here, and not just with uh, the high school game on our Mixler channel. We also do Atlanta United two games on the Mixler channel as well. And just keep an eye on all of the live events that we have, whether games or what have you. It'll be on our Mixler site. But if you want to go on the web, it's right there, soccerdownhere.mixler.com, or you can download the Mixler app and follow Soccer Down Here. Okay, so here's the traffic. That The second half hour of the show, we're going to preview the matchup tonight. A little after 7 o'clock, it is slated for North Gwinnett and Mill Creek at uh, 1215. It's uh, Ryan Burkhart, and then uh, it's uh, Vince Hayes at 12.30. And, of course, I might have sent them 15 minutes off. So anything is humanly possible when it comes to these two. So I'm going to check my emails really quickly and uh, see what happens. So uh, I'm, I'm, let me double-check this. I, I want to see I want to see if I've completely messed this up and pushed our guests back an entire 15 minutes. That, to me, would make the most sense. I did. All right, so uh, so it will be Ryan Burkhardt at 12.30, and it will be Vince Hayes at 12.45. And I will show you my evidence. I will show you the evidence that I had. So here's how I was writing things down as we were getting ready for the show. So uh, I have on the left-hand side of the page, I have all the content that I was trying to do for the morning show. And so on the right-hand side of the page are the coaches. And so what I'll do is I'll slide it in here to the camera, and I'll try and tilt it. So just to give you an idea as to what we have. All right, so. That's what I was looking at right here. So uh, waiting on uh, Philip Thomas from River Ridge. He's uh, battling some stuff away from school this morning. So I see 1215 and 1230. So what do I do? I'm thinking, all right, so I've assigned Ryan Burkhart 1215. I thought I was doing that. Instead, I look down instead of up. So here's, here's how it is. So instead of looking up, like I'd scheduled Phil Thomas at noon. I'd scheduled Phil Thomas at noon. I, I did that. So instead of looking up like I had done before, I looked down. And so Ryan Burkhart, 1230, Vince Hayes, 1245, and then that'll close the show up at 1 o'clock. So instead of looking up like I did when I tried to bring in uh, Phil Thomas from River Ridge, I looked down. And so bottom of the hour is when we're going to start our preview of uh, North Gwinnett and Mill Creek, and that'll be on the network a little after, a little before 7 o'clock with the pregame. Uh, Jason Longshore, Madison Cruz, and myself will take you through it, and we will uh, let you know what's going on with uh, all of that in the uh, round two of the playoffs. So I'm off to a good start. You'd think this was a Monday. All right, so what we'll do, we'll go through the matchups, 
and we'll take you through everything on the uh, the girls' side and what to anticipate today. We'll go through all of the matchups that are happening here on the 23rd, and it is, once again, your odd numbers, 7A, 5A, 3A, single A. And so 7A, 5A, 3A, and single A, those are the matchups that we're going to go through here as we uh, uh, see if uh, Coach Thomas can join us here in the first half hour. All right, 7A, Mill Creek beat Cherokee 1-0. North Gwinnett at home beat Lambert 2-1. So that's how you end up with the matchup tonight with the the one and the two that's going to be at Tom Robinson Memorial Stadium. That'll be on the air once again a little after 7 o'clock. And so that's what uh, that's going to be the matchup tonight for us here on the network. All right, upper right-hand side of the bracket since we're there. Harrison knocked off Carrollton. Brookwood shut out Cockwood County. So those two in a 1-2. They will meet at the uh, Dave Hunter Athletic Complex in Brookwood Community Stadium tonight. Mill Creek, North Gwinnett, Harrison, and Brookwood. That's upper right in your brackets in 7A. Low right, Mountain View over North Cobb. So a three beats a two on the road at, at uh, Emory Sewell. And they will travel to West Forsyth, who shut out Peachtree Ridge in a 1-4, 3-0. So Mountain View is at West Forsyth. North Paulding knocked off East Coweta in a three over a two. They get to travel to the coast to take on Richmond Hill. Richmond Hill beat South Gwinnett in Bryan County last week. And so it is Mountain View at West Forsyth, North Paulding, and Richmond Hill. That's low right as you're looking at your 7A bracket. In the uh, upper left, Lowndes beat Parkview at home in, in the Concrete Palace. And that is a 3-2 winner there. So Lowndes advances, but they have to travel to Campbell to take on Campbell High. They shut out Marietta 3-0. So Lowndes is at Campbell today in round two. Denmark over Duluth 4-1. They travel to Walton, who shut out Collins Hill. So it's Lowndes at Campbell, Denmark at Walton. That's upper left. Low left in your 7A bracket. Camden County went on the road Went to Loganville to beat Archer 3-1. So guess what? They get to go on the road again. They probably are on the road right now. They probably left first thing this morning from Kingsland. And they're probably stretching their legs, say, somewhere on I-16 or or somewhere just south of Macon. They travel to Hillgrove. Hillgrove beat Pebblebrook. They shut them out. Uh, The game was pushed. It was postponed a little bit. They had some uh, weather delays. Game took a lot of the evening at Hillgrove before Hillgrove shut out Pebblebrook. So Camden County travels to Hillgrove this afternoon, and they will play once again at the home of the Hawks. And then Milton shuts out Norcross, so a three beat at two, one nil. And Buford shut out Wheeler uh, by the score of nine nil. So Buford hosts Milton. So low left in 7A. It is Camden County at Hillgrove, Milton at Buford. That's your 7A here today when it comes to round number two on the girls' side. Just to remember, uh, the 6A girls, that is Thursday. And we'll get into that coming up in just a little bit because 6A, 4A, 2A, that is our game on Thursday as we have it scheduled right now. Trinity, Christian, and Perry in Quad A. That's Thursday with the other even-numbered matchups. In 5A girls, it is, we'll go left-hand side. We'll go, we'll confuse you now. We'll start with the upper left-hand side and go left to right. Upper left, Tucker over Statesboro by the final of 2-1. They host Northside Columbus, who upset the number one seed in that mini bracket, 1-0. They beat Dutchtown. So Northside Columbus travels to Tucker for uh, the matchup today. Then GAC shut out Woodland Cartersville. Midtown no problems with Eastside. So it's GAC at Midtown. That one will be uh, right there in the heart of uh, right next to Piedmont Park. So it is uh, Northside Columbus at Tucker. GAC at Midtown. That's your upper left-hand bracket in 5A. Decatur beats Ware County 5-0. Northgate no problem with Locust Grove in the 1-4. So Decatur travels to Northgate in round number two today. Chattahoochee as the three seed beat Cartersville at Weinman Stadium. And so Chattahoochee travels to Jefferson. So that's a bit of a road trip for them to take on the Dragons. Jefferson no problem with Tri-Cities as they won that one. And so it is Decatur at Northgate, Chattahoochee at Jefferson. That's the left-hand side of the bracket round number two. Right-hand side, Loganville shut out Jackson, Atlanta. They will host Northview. Northview beat Dalton in the 1-4 matchup in the mini bracket in the upper right. And so it is Northview at Loganville in uh, round number two. McIntosh shuts out Union Grove. 
Shambly, no problems with coffee. So Macintosh at Shambly, that one will be going on today in 5A. If you're looking for a spot shadow in 5A, keep an eye on that one. Clark Central over Villarica in a 3-2. So Clark Central will travel to Cambridge, who had no problems with Calhoun. Harris County beat Ola in a 3-2. Nope, Greenbrier, no problem with Arabia Mountain. So it is Clark Central at Cambridge, Harris County at Greenbrier. That is your uh, 5A bracket for today in round number two. Triple A. Upper left-hand side, Harlem uh, went to extra time and to PKs before beating Thomasville. Uh, that one was 1-1 at the end of 100 minutes. Harlem advances. They go to Zebulon to take on Pike County. Pike County beat Long County 1-0. So Harlem goes to Pike County this afternoon. Dawson County over Adairsville 4-2. They host as the three seed because Stevens County beat Sandy Creek at Sandy Creek in Tyrone. So upper left in AAA, Harlem at Pike. Stevens County travels to Dawson County. So Stevens County to Dawsonville this go-around. Low left. Morgan County shuts out Crisp County. They travel to Savannah Country Day, who shut out Upson Lee. Lumpkin County, no problem with Cahulla Creek. And Oconee County, no problems with Carver Atlanta. So low left is Morgan County at Savannah Country Day. Lumpkin County is at Oconee County. Right-hand side in AAA. Hebron Christian, no problem with Cedar Grove. Wesleyan, no problem with LFO. We have seen Wesleyan's girls on uh, the, the SDH network this season so we know with uh with what's uh with what's going on uh wesleyan high-powered offense and it is uh it is a a team that really has been prolific when it comes to scoring the the margins that they have they have uh run riot and region play and they continue to put up a lot of goals this season for uh everything that uh, the wolves have done uh, so that uh, upper right hand, uh, upper right hand section is uh, going to be a lot of offense that we've seen so far. Will that continue, or will Hebron Christian and Wesleyan's defenses cancel things out a little bit? That will be the interesting thing to see here. Wesleyan as hosting Hebron Christian. St. Vincent's beat Jackson six one. Richmond Academy, uh, Richmond Academy ARC they had no problem with Carver Columbus. So Hebron Christian at Wesleyan, St. Vincent's traveling to ARC. So that is your upper. Uh, that's your upper right hand side, and so yeah, no, uh, you know, so it'll be uh, interesting to see once again how these prolific offenses work uh, on the right hand side. Uh, also, you go low right, and uh, you look at the what's going on in AAA in uh, the low right part of your bracket, Monroe area, no problem with Douglas Atlanta, and Bremen squeaks by White County in a 1-4. So Monroe area over Bremen, uh, Monroe area travels to Bremen here in round number two. Mary Persons in a shootout beats Calvary Day. That match was in for Scythe. So that was a 4-3 final. Mary Persons advances and they take on Columbus. So Columbus, uh, no problem with Hepsivus. So low right in AAA. It is Monroe area at Bremen, Mary Persons, and Columbus. All right. So, uh, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to catch up. We're going to actually, you know, Ryan actually read my sheet of paper. I give Ryan Burkhardt a lot of credit. So I, I showed folks what was going on here with my no, with my notebook and the fact that I can't read. So we're going to bring Ryan Burkhardt in because Ryan reads my sheet better than I read my sheet. <laughs> because Ryan and I had sat there and said, okay, Ryan, let's do 12-15. And uh, do not be surprised. Uh, Philip Thomas crashes, and uh, we we have a we have a coach collision because I read it wrong when I sent out the email this morning. You read it right when I sent the email out initially, so that's where we are here. So Ryan Burkhart is going to hang out with us and uh, catch up about things with North Gwinnett as we get ready for the matchup tonight on the SDH Network. So for those that haven't had the chance to see North Gwinnett this year, what has it been like for you to watch this team? Surprising. I mean, I guess, um, and, and, and thank you, John, for having us. I appreciate all the coverage of high school soccer, but, uh, you know, I don't, I, you always kind of just like in professional sports, sometimes the schedule comes out and you, you can't help, but look at it and say, okay, this, this, this might be a win. This might be a loss. This might be, you know, where we kind of get our butts whooped a little bit and, and, and uh, that'll be good for the team. And so I guess surprise is probably the best word. Not that I don't think that this group could do it, but just, that uh you know they've been really resilient and uh, you know with 
so many games packed into the weeks that we're allowed to play high school soccer and, you know, the rest that you have to give to girls and you have to, you know, play your whole roster, just uh, happy and surprised that the girls, you know, don't let the level of play fall off and they push each other and, and they've been, you know, in game, they've been, they fought back after being down from some games, they've taken care of business. I told them at the end of the season, you know, I don't, I don't want us to be, I don't really care about being undefeated. That's great and all, but let's take a second to at least applaud ourselves for a minute because that's really, really hard to do in any regular season at any level to not have one game where you're just off that day, you know? So and you so you get through region play, you end up as the the top seed coming out of the region. And I, and I know that folks, uh, we all look at brackets. We all sit there and it's like, uh, you know, you're in region play, you get close to the end of the regular season. It's like, okay, well, if this, then this, I know coaches will do it. They'll get out the big boards and they'll kind of mock up things and how things will uh, might work themselves out. How did you keep this group, uh, you know, the way that uh, they were navigating the season, how did you keep them focused on regular season and not even thinking about season three and that first matchup with Lambert until the regular season was over? Because we all like to look ahead and see what our paths are. How did you keep them focused on the task at hand? Um, I think that any coach probably does this. You try to chunk everything. So I just told them, you know, I always say there, there's multiple seasons. There's there's the preseason and, and like the uh, workouts and getting ready. And then there's I, I say there's pre-region. And so all those games, you play about four or five games before a region game. And that's all about getting better. And I don't care if we lose all five or six of those. It's just get better. You know what? Try different things. Everybody play and, get, and you know, get minutes. And then we say, OK, region is a six step process. So even though after five games, we did actually have the region mathematically locked up, you know, we tried to say this is a six step process. We still want to finish the region on a high note and went and do good in that sixth game. And then kind of after that sixth game and we want, we had the region schedule over uh, that's when we, I told the girls, you know, I know you've been wanting to do this all year. Let's go ahead and turn the page. We do have two more regular season games left. We still played, uh, well, we, we still played Northview, which was a you know non-region game. But as soon as we finished that last region game, I just said, okay, now you can – now is what we've been wanting to do all year. And I know even if you've had that in the back of your mind, let, let's – we're in full playoff mode, and that's what all we want to talk about and all we want to get ready for. And so they're just, you know, just trying to chunk it like that and not even really talk about it, not even reference it. That's not even the part of the season we're in, you know, and, and hopefully that's kept them focused. Sorry. About the bell here. It's, it's all about class schedules. I know. So what I will do is I will ask my next question through the the bells. Oh, while they stop yeah. for you, Let's stop. Uh, Fifteen zero and two, six and zero in region play, and according to some polls, you're you know top thirty five in the country. You know top fifteen in the state of Georgia across the board, and I, I know that expectations are one thing and results getting through. And I like to call them the three seasons because for me. You have your non-region schedule season one, which you hope gets you ready for season two, which you hope gets you ready for season three. Yeah, exactly. And, and, you know, you have some folks that will sit there and it's like, look, with my non-region schedule, don't look at my win-loss record because that's not where we make our hay. That's where we get better to get us into region and these kinds of things. Um, if I had told you as we go into this second round matchup tonight, that you would be where you are with your win-loss record and the national attention that you're getting. Like I said, some polls have you like number 32 in the country if you want to, so it would be like RV or what have you. If I had told you that would be the situation going into this match, what would you have told me at the beginning of the year if I had told you that? Um, I would have not believed you, to be honest with you. Uh, and it's not that – it's not that – I wouldn't think that we had the talent to do that. It's not so I'm not saying I don't believe in the girls. It's just that, like you said, that first chunk of the season, you don't care. And 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 if you're a coach that truly believes in that, which hopefully I am, and, and I know that some other coaches you're having on today, like that's what they truly believe is it doesn't matter. I'm trying, I'm everybody's gonna play. I'm gonna try different formations, even if they look bad, just to see what they look like. And so, you know. I'm not results driven in those first 
a few weeks or anything like that. So I would have just been, I just, I just would have been really surprised. Like I said, probably at the beginning, cause you'd have thought, okay, well we're playing a very tough non region schedule. We're going to, we're going to probably take it on the chin at least one or two of those games. Ryan Burkhart, the head coach of North Gwinnett, hanging out with us, previewing the matchup tonight against Mill Creek on the SDH Network. A little, uh, We'll be on a little before 7. You'll be out there warming up a little before we come on the air, kick off at 7 o'clock, and uh, looking forward to it tonight. Another couple of minutes with you. So when for someone who hasn't seen – I'm going to be on the move here for a second just because oh, I'm – it's okay. Uh, the the uh, the there's some guys that need to cycle into this classroom. It's so all there. good. It's a, part that's of the class environment. Exactly. We get the tour right. of North Kent High School. Yeah, go for it. I'm listening. Uh, so, for those that haven't had the chance to see you, if I say, "All right, so introduce folks to North Gwinnett soccer," how would you describe your play? And for those that might be seeing you for the first time, if they come to Tom Robinson tonight, how uh, who would be in your spot shadow as folks to follow along? to sit there and say, okay, North Gwinnett is doing well. I need to keep an eye on X, Y, or Z or, or whatever. So how would you introduce folks to North Gwinnett soccer? So it's always kind of, you know, you, I think every coach kind of has a philosophy and this is the way they like to play and, um, you know, not to give away too much of the X's and O's, but oh, like, no. uh, I think, every, I think a lot of coaches would be okay being a little bit more possession based and, you know, 55%, 60% of the ball, um, I think in that non-region play and the region play, I just, I think we, uh, so if you come out to the game tonight, you're going to, I think what we realized throughout the season is like, listen, if we can hover around 50%, that's great. Yeah. We're, we're okay. Having half of the ball, even a little bit less. Um, you're going to see us try to get into the attack pretty quickly. Um, you know, in the high school game, if you have a handful of girls that can put the ball in the net, then that's 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 going to put you in a pretty good position for success. And I think with coming to the game tonight and watching North Gwinnett, you're going to see about five girls that can do that. So I think that we just have a very diverse attack. We have some girls that can really finish when they're around the goal. Now, uh, you know, Mill Creek is incredibly good defensively, so we might not get around the goal a whole lot. <laughs> but but uh, I hope that we do. And I hope that we're around the goal a lot and you can kind of see how fun uh, it is to watch this group attack. Yeah, because I was going to ask you, uh, what has Study Hall been like looking at Mill Creek getting ready for for Vince Hayes and his squad coming into tonight? Well, I I, I hope that obviously Vince uh, would say the same about me, but uh, it's just I think we texted each other at the beginning of the year, or well, like you said, you always look at brackets, and so we already know what sides that we're matched up with, so kind of back in January, I said, well, you know, I, I already had it just way, way in the back of my head. If we do, if we do what we want to do and we win region, we're, and we make it past the sec first round, we're probably going to play either Buford or Mill Creek, whoever wins that region or whoever first or second, depending on who's first or second. Right. And I was like, so that's going to be a crazy first round matchup because that for Scythe region is great. And then it's going to be another tough, crazy second round matchup. So we kind of knew our first two rounds are going to be brutal and not only brutal because you're playing a great soccer team, but Vince is a friend. Vince is a, um, he's a great coach. He's somebody who I, I look up to. And, and uh, when I've gotten into um, coaching club, you know, I, 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 I picked his brain about stuff. Um, so I just I know it's going to be really well coached. Uh, they're a young team, but we played them on Feb. We actually played them on February 9th. So you can even see, you know, they've shown growth. You know, his teams are going to always be better at the end than they're going to be at the beginning. And I mean, they're going to be ready. So I mean, that's kind of been my message with the girls. Is like you, I know. Of course, I hope that we're ready. But as long as you guys know that this team's going to be very well informed, they're going to be very uh, organized defensively, and. Um, you know, we have to make sure that we you know, bring our A game. When it comes to the response there on campus about the the soccer program, and you can you can account for both the boys and the girls here, how does the North Gwinnett community wrap itself around the, the soccer community, and what has the response been like to, to the teams this season from your perspective as they have gone through the year? 
so I'm always, um, I've always just been an oversharer probably. So, uh, you know, although it's not a common practice around here with a lot of teams, I, I'll always send out emails to the faculty and just say like, Hey, this is how the girls are doing. Or these are some of the teams. These are some of the accolades the team or the girls got. And I try to keep everybody informed. And we've had such bad weather this year with most of our home. It seemed like a lot of our home games were, uh, as you probably experienced going out to cover these games, it seemed like every Tuesday or Friday was rain, cold. Uh, so, you know, you're, you're not going to get the biggest crowds, but you, you always get people walking by in the hallway and how to go. I heard you guys did good. And, and it just having the teachers informed so that they can say stuff to their kids in class. That's, that's always fun. Um, the bigger games, you know, those, those kind of the, the, the Norcross game, which was a huge, you know, home region game. Um, you know, the senior night, the community night, cause we're kind of right in the middle of a few large Atlanta clubs, Atlanta fire United, United Football Academy, uh, all in FC. So like we're right in the middle of all these. So we try to have all a lot, you know, get a lot of those clubs to come out for games. And then, so, you know, we had a home playoff game and we knew it was going to be really tough. I think the biggest response we're coming off of probably our biggest response where I really challenged the North community to come out to that Lambert game last Tuesday, because honestly, I was a little concerned. I've been to, I've been to Lambert games. They bring a crowd they're raucous. They're a great soccer community yeah. and they're 15 minutes down the road. So I was like, we don't, we're not going to have a huge home field advantage if we don't respond. And we mm -hmm. responded. I mean, we had hundreds of people out all wearing red. It was a red out and there was a, a ton of Lambert people there too, but they had, they didn't get to dominate the crowd like they might've thought they were. They had to go toe to toe with our crowd. And I mean, it, it just made for what, you know, what Friday nights or, you know, it wasn't even Friday night. What, what Tuesday nights, or soccer nights under the lights is all about, man. It was it was awesome. It was just so fun. And we're looking forward to the environment tonight at Tom Robinson Memorial Stadium. Thanks for being great uh, for being great host to us on ro rolling out the red carpet. I mean that literally. I can say that. Uh, looking forward to seeing everybody tonight. And thanks for giving your half of the preview. And I will ask uh, Vince when he comes here on the show in short order the same kinds of questions I'm asking you. So there won't be any real. Uh, there won't be any secrets divulged uh, <laughs> either way, one way or the other, un unless you guys want to text each other and tell everybody. We've been texting each other this week. We're, we're both excited and just hope it's a good game. Good deal. Well, Ryan, looking forward to seeing you in a couple hours. And uh, I, I love the game day look where you, you're styling and profiling on a game day with the. Uh, I, 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 I let the leaders lead and the leaders of the team said it's a dress up day. So that does not exclude me. Very cool. Well, we'll be seeing you in short order. Thanks for hanging out with us on your lunch hour and, uh, and uh, glad that you could secure space in between periods and in multiple periods to hang out with us here on Soccer's In Session. See you soon, my friend. I yeah, appreciate it. Thank you. All right. There goes Ryan. And uh, so uh, Ryan is uh, half of the equation. And, uh, there, you know, I, I'm going to ask about these texts. I have to ask about the texts that, uh, that, the, two, that the two of them, uh, uh, Ryan Burkhart and Vince Hayes, were sending back and forth. Looking forward to hearing about these texts and seeing what they are. So that's half of the equation. For tonight at seven o'clock, and uh, looking forward to uh, what uh, what we're going to have with North Gwinnett and Mill Creek. Uh, let's pick up the brackets where we left them for uh, today, and getting you ready for everything around the state. Uh, because once again, it's odd numbers today, and we have gone through everything. We've gone through seven, five, and three. Let's get you into single A, and this is where you are starting to get uh, full brackets, especially in single A Division Two, because there were not enough teams in uh, Class AD2 to come out with a full 32-team bracket. So uh, upper left-hand corner, Mount Zion, won in round number one. They travel all the way from one end of the state to the other to take on Aquinas. McIntosh County Academy lost to GMC, and so GMC travels to Portal, take on the Portal Panthers. So upper left in uh, Class AD2, it is uh, Mount Zion, Carroll at Aquinas. GMC is at Portal. Low left. Towns County uh, shut out Trutland 2 0. They travel to Christian Heritage. So you go from Towns County, I believe, Hiawassee to uh, Dalton. So you're going across the mountains to uh, go from Towns County to Christian Heritage. Then low left Eccles County over the Fuji's Academy. That was a 2 0 win for Eccles County. They travel up I 75 to take on Hawkinsville. So it is Towns County at Christian Heritage, Eccles County 
and Hawkinsville. Right-hand side of the bracket is the round of 16 in Class AD2. Dooley County got a first round by, as did Wheeler County, so Dooley travels to Wheeler. Lincoln County, we caught up with Lee Homskis last week after the win against Montgomery County, where they were down early, came back to tie it after uh, 80 minutes, kept it going for 100 minutes, then won it in PK. So Lincoln County, this is at 5.30 in the afternoon, traveling to Lake Oconee Academy. They've beaten the number one team in Class AD2 already this season, and they're having to go to Lake Oconee Academy again to do it. And we'll see what happens there. Lincoln County at Lake Oconee Academy. That is in the right-hand side of your brackets uh, in the upper right in Class AD2. Also on the board, it is uh, Johnson County. They won over Green County in round number one. They travel to Pearson to take on ATCO. ATCO is doing well on the boys and the girls' sides this season. We'll try to catch up with our friends from Pearson in short order. Chatco shut out Bowden by the final of 3-0. And Chatco travels to Atlanta Classic, uh, Classical Academy. So low right, it is Johnson County at ATCO. And Chatco is at Atlanta Classical. In single A, D1 girls, and this is also today, and this will wrap up all of the, the brackets that we have for today. It is uh, Irwin County knocked off uh, Crawford County at uh, Buddy Noble Stadium, and they will travel to East Lawrence. East Lawrence shut out Screvin in round number one. Whitfield Academy shut out Darlington in a 2-3 social circle, no problem with Elbert County. So Whitfield Academy travels to social circle. That's the left-hand side, upper left. Irwin County at East Lawrence, Whitfield Academy is at social circle. Low left, Temple, no problem with Brooks County. They advance and they travel to Metter. Metter shut out Jeffco, so it is Temple and Metter. And Mount Vernon beat Tryon in a, in a shootout 4-3. So Mount Vernon travels to Tallulah Falls, who beat PAC. So it's Temple at Metter, Mount Vernon and Tallulah Falls. It's the left-hand side of your bracket in Class A, D1. Right-hand side, upper right, it is uh, Rabin County. They beat Jasper County 5-4, and they get the home game because Atlanta International shut out our Murchie in a 1-4 uh, in, the, the, in West Georgia. So it is Atlanta International at Rabin County. Bryan County beat Swainsboro. Lamar County had a bye because there is no fourth team in Region 1. So Bryan County will travel to Lamar. Uh, Oglethorpe County in the 2-3. They win over Commerce, and they travel to Paidea. Paidea shut out Dade County, so Oglethorpe County comes to Paidea. And Bleckley County beat Claxton 6-4. They will travel to Bacon County, and Bacon County was the top seed out of Region 1. So low right, it's Oglethorpe County, Paidea, Bleckley County, and Bacon County. And that's your brackets for everything going on in Class A, D1. We've had half of the equation, so now we bring in the other half of the equation. And it's time to catch up with Vince Hayes at Mill Creek. We bring in uh, Coach Hayes. And uh, I've heard from a, a little birdie named uh, Ryan Burkhart that the two of you have already been texting. You've been texting this week about uh, about what's going on. Have there been state secrets exchanged? What's been going on in these texts between you two? Uh, no state secrets. Uh, absolutely not. Just uh, <laughs> the 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 the. the Unkept secret is that uh, I, I really admire Ryan as a person and as a coach and um, kind of think the world of him. I really wish he would have been a two seed so I wouldn't have to face him this early. Um, but that's that's really it between us. When when I mention North Gwinnett soccer, Gwinnett to, you, soccer to you, what comes what? to mind? <laughs> Um, you know, I got a history in the county. Um, I played against North Gwinnett when I was a player here, uh, not at Mill Creek, but uh, at my high school. Um, my first coaching job was at North Gwinnett, believe it or not. Uh, I was a student teacher. And so it goes way back. Um, the North Gwinnett was a premier program, has been a premier program in the county on the girls' side and the boys' side for a long, long time. Um, and so, you know, when you when I came into Mill Creek, you know, that was really the, the focus. Uh, let's hold real quick. I lost you. No, you're good. You're back. Sorry. No, you're um, and so, back. so when I came into Mill Creek, really the focus was, you know, being able to step in and, you know, be able to go toe to toe uh, with some of the big teams. And, and North Gwinnett was one of the first teams that we really measured ourselves against. And so um, our programs have had some, some real, uh, high level matches that have had, you know, um, you know, big stakes online. And so it seems like 
you know, we're, we're always kind of destined to face off at some point. So when I mentioned Mill Creek girls soccer, what comes to mind? Uh, <laughs> um, you know, in terms of our program, you know, we try to do things the right way. We try to have kids who respect the game, respect each other, play hard, do everything they can for each other and, and, you know, try to, you know, get results, uh, but do it in the right way. Um, we try to build a, a culture and a program that, um, you know, is not only effective, but respected. Um, and, you know, we, we definitely respect our opponents. And this is going to be one of those situations tonight. When you look at a season, I know that you look at a growth curve. You, you want you want things to go this way. You, you want to, to be hitting everything in stride when you get to the playoffs in season three. Uh, I've and like I like I tell folks when I'm covering uh, the uh, the oblong football during the during the fall months, I always look at it as three separate seasons. Season one's your non-region schedule, which you hope gets you ready for season two, which is mm -hmm. your region schedule, which gets you ready. You hope for season three, which is the playoffs and the postseason, which hopefully you want to play the maximum number of games. How do you think, as someone who wants to have a team? Uh, on an upward curve, how do you think that your team has grown through season one and season two to get you ready for season three? Uh, that's exactly how you should look at it. Um, you know, we talk about that all the time. You know, we want to peak at the right time. Um, I would say that the group of kids that we have this year that was theoretically a rebuilding year to be in the second round um, says a lot about their quality. We started out the season, I think we were – three losses, one win and one tie, you know, and to say that we're, you know, second in the region and then we're, we're moving on, you know, uh, at this level says a lot about the quality of the girls in our program. And I got to give them all credit and the credit to the assistant coaches as well. Um, as you get further along, the real test is, is you're handing more and more to your players. Do they want to be there? Are they willing to work hard? Are they willing to invest in each other and sacrifice and, you know, and, 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 and stay committed you know, and stay stuck in. And, and we've got a really good group of that. They've, they've started to get to know each other. You know, they've started to adopt this next man up mentality. Okay. So this player maybe isn't, you know, at hundred percent, I'm ready to step in and help out. And so that's what you want when you get into this third season, as we, we have that same identity in our program, how we focus on our season. So. If I had told you at the beginning of the year, considering everything that you've told me about this being a rebuilding season and so on, if I had told you that would you'd be 11 and four, you would have been second in your region at eight and two, and you'd be where you are right now, second round of the playoffs in a in a massive matchup against North Gwinnett. What would you have told me if I had told you that was going to be the case at the beginning of the season? I would say I would hope for the best, <laughs> and that, that would be the best. So, so, you know, I think that. Um, you know, in our wildest dreams, did we think we were going to come right back after, you know, so many players graduating or, or, or through injury or through, you know, situations and, and have such a young group of talent. I mean, a lot of our talents in our sophomore class to say that we're going to be where we are now. I mean, you know, as a, every coach, that's your goal. Uh, but, you know, you know, things can definitely not go your way as well. And, and we've been very fortunate. Vince Hayes, the head coach of the Mill Creek Varsity Girls side, hanging out with us. The other half of the matchup here on the SDH Network coming up a little after seven o'clock or right at seven o'clock, depending on whoever has the timepiece. So seven o'clock at Tom Robinson Memorial Stadium. It is uh, Mill Creek in North Gwinnett here on the SDH Network. Really looking forward to this. We've had Mill Creek on the air earlier in the season, getting to catch up with them here in the postseason. So uh, if I were to walk up tonight to this matchup and I hadn't seen Mill Creek play this season. I'm coming in completely green to this matchup. Haven't seen North Gwinnett, haven't seen Mill Creek. If I was to ask you if things are going well for you philosophically out there on the field, how would you describe that in the terms of what you want to do with Mill Creek soccer? If, I, if I'm seeing Mill Creek soccer do well out there on the field, what are you doing? All right, so now you do want some state secrets, huh? No, no, I'm, I'm, talking, <laughs> I'm, talking, I'm talking history. So um, historically, when you've won this year, how about this? Historically, when you've won this season, mm -hmm. when I talk about Mill Creek <laughs> girls soccer doing well, what has Mill Creek done this year leading into this matchup with North Gwinnett? I got you. Well, you know, I think 
the we have a game model. We have we have an identity that we want to establish in the game. Mm-hmm. Um, we want to dominate the ball. Um, we want to break down our opponent by uh, you know uh, quick passing and receiving. We want to have very rapid transitions and ball movement so that we can disrupt our opponent. We we are not a stand beside you, kick it, win it, put it in the goal because we just don't have that those kind of players. Nor is that really a recipe for you know long term success in what we're trying to do. And so. If you're watching the game and you see us connecting five passes, if you see us, you know, moving the ball into the opponent's half, you, you know that we're we're pressing the gas, and that's what we're going to try to do. Um, you know, we're gonna we're gonna try to establish a rhythm where you know we can we can get into areas and cause problems, create overloads, um, and then get numbers in the box and score. So when you uh, when you gauge all of this and the growth of the program in, in your tenure. What has it been like for you to see Mill Creek grow to where it is, you know, in in the, the soccer landscape? Because I would imagine, you know, in, in Gwinnett County, a lot of folks are looking at folks and sitting there going, OK, wow, they're really doing well. They're they're improving. They're improving. They're improving. They're new. They're doing this. What's it been like for you to see the growth of the Mill Creek program on the whole? Um, it's 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 really special. Um, you know, we've we've had a hallmark where we wanted to go from something where, you know, sometimes you have good teams to a program where every year we know what we're going to be able to do and, and we're going to be competitive with every team in the state. And I think we're, we're working toward that every year. This year's a good example of that. Um, You know, obviously, you know, you get to a certain point, you know, and you want to kind of leave a legacy. I'm now here over a decade at Mill Creek, um, you know, and we've been, you know, we've been in it every year and, um, and that's the best you can hope for. We've got some great kids in our program, great kids in our school, um, you know, going to practice, interacting with them every day, seeing what they do is just it's awesome. And so I think that, you know, that's really what we're here for. Looking forward to it tonight at seven o'clock. We'll be on the air a little before seven. Looking forward to it with uh, Mill Creek at North Gwinnett here in round number two of the 7A playoffs on the girls side. Coach, as always, great to see you. Thanks for hanging out with us during your lunch hour. Go get lunch. <laughs> the bell to ring. Go for it. <laughs> Got to get to class, guys. Thank you so much, John, for everything you do for soccer and for sports in the in the South. You bet. Looking forward to it. We'll see you soon. He's got to go to class, so he's going to class. We kept him right there, right to the end. And if he's late, he can blame them. He can blame me. That's perfectly fine. That, that's that's how this goes. If you're late, blame blame the interview. Blame the interview. That's exactly what you do. You blame the interview in this case. And uh, so that's the, that's been the, uh, the, the fun part in all of this is catching up with coaches all around the state and uh, trying to make sure that uh, they're okay to do it. If they get, have to have a class covered uh, for something like this, uh, it, it's been fun to, to take the tour around the state. So tomorrow, obviously, uh, you know, we'll sit there and we'll take a peek at uh, what it's going to look like around the state. Remember Thursday, the plan right now is uh, Trinity Christian and, uh, uh, Trinity Christian at Perry. And so uh, we will uh, we'll let you know about the broadcast plans for that. It's supposed to be a six o'clock kick in Perry in middle Georgia. So we'll keep an eye on that one as well. It is uh, with all of these brackets that we have just to give you the lay of the land when it comes to uh, what to anticipate this week. It is actually, believe it or not, you know, tomorrow it'll be the, the boys' side of things. And so we'll try to catch up with some of the coaches on the even-numbered, so odd-numbered side of the boys. And so the odd-numbered side of the boys on the 24th, and when uh, you end up with all of that. So we'll, we'll try to track down odd-numbered coaches for tomorrow. So we'll, we'll try to track down odd-numbered coaches for tomorrow and let you know what's going on on the boys' side. So uh, the 24th is just like it was in the opening round. It is girls side today, boys side, 7A, 5A, 3A, and the two class A's. That is tomorrow. Then it is two, four, and six on the 26th. You actually get Wednesday, uh, you actually get uh, the 26th. So 26th is uh, the uh, even boys. And then the even on the girls' side is the 25th. So it's 23, 24, 25, and 26. So it is today, 
it is Wednesday, it is Thursday, it is Friday. Well, like I said, our plans are Tuesday and Thursday this week to keep you posted on things. So following up once again, today, 7A, 5A, 3A, Class A girls. Tomorrow, 7A, 5A, 3A, Class A boys. Then it is Thursday, 2A, 4A, 6A girls. Friday, 2A, 4A, 6A boys. And we will try to track down the schedules uh, as they roll. But there are some really interesting matchups across the board that uh, are are a part of the schedules. So uh, let me get you the start times in case you are in a market and, and can uh, watch a match today. So to, to get your, uh, to get your scores and get your locations and all this kind of stuff. Like we said, there are some, there are some start times that are a little off the beaten track because of travel and such. We mentioned the Lincoln County matchup with, uh, with the Lake County Academy, that being a five thirty matchup as well. So uh, you've got, uh, Morgan County Savannah Country Day. That one is listed at 4:30 in the afternoon. Once again, because of travel and so on, you have uh, a lot of the the GIAA matchups that are going on. The GIC AA matchups are going on as well, and they are early in the afternoon or late in the afternoon, early evening. They're like five o'clock starts and so on. The GIAAs are late afternoons. Northside and Tucker is listed as a six o'clock start. Once again, getting from Columbus leaving and getting back to Columbus. You have uh, Atlanta International Rabin County. That one is a six o'clock matchup because of the travel that is associated with that one. Mount Zion and Aquinas, because once again, Mount Zion's going from one end of the planet to the other. That is a six o'clock start. North Paulding, Richmond Hill. Richmond Hill, by the way, 16-0-2 coming into this matchup with North Paulding at 10-5-2. That is a six o'clock start. Harrison and Brookwood, a six o'clock start. Stevens County, Dawson County, a six o'clock start. GMC and Portal is a six. Hebron Christian Wesleyan is a 630. Wesleyan comes into the matchup 16 1 and 1. 630, McIntosh and Shambly. McIntosh 13 3 and 1 going up against Shambly, who is 9 6 and 3. Once again, Mill Creek, North Gwinnett. We mentioned that one's at seven o'clock. Decatur and Northgate is uh, seven o'clock. It is uh, Clark Central and Cambridge at seven. Mountain View and West Forsyth is at 7, and we are waiting start times on a lot of the other matchups that are that are around. Uh, we have, uh, let's see, 8, 10, 12 matchups where we're waiting on start times, but do not be surprised when you look, if there is distance involved, that it might be a little earlier than normal. So keep an eye out on start times specifically for matchups like Harlem and Pike, Bremen and Monroe area. Whitfield Academy and Social Circle, Metter and Temple, definitely a candidate for an early start. Uh, Brookwood and Harrison should be fairly normal, as would Denmark and Walton. Hillgrove and Camden. All right, so let's, let's do some investigating. Let's workshop the rest of this schedule while we're talking about it. So uh, we're looking for, uh, let's just say, Harlem and Pike County, because we know that you're going to have to travel from uh, basically Augusta to uh you're going to have to travel from Augusta to Zebulon, and that is not uh, that is not something that is an easy trek. So for uh, the, a team like Pike County and a team like Harlem to get this matchup all squared away, trying to uh, figure out, you know, you're, you're trying. It's like I'm trying to use the internet here. I'm trying to use the internet, and I'm also trying to type, and two things that never really combine very well. So. Uh, Pike County and the matchup against Harlem listed, listed as a TBA and nothing like a pop-up window as, as a part of the process. So uh, still listed as a TBA. Bremen and Monroe area, that's one that's got some uh, some travel attached to it as well. So I'll tell you what. So I don't have pop-up windows pop up in my ears. I'm going to do it like this. So that way we can get it working this way. So, all right. So let's workshop the matchups. And see if any of these other start times. And once again, I'm, I'm with, with our friends here at Max Preps. And so, uh, so if we go, and we're trying to figure out the the matchup between Bremen and Monroe area. Do we have a matchup time yet? No, we do not. Uh, we might have to actually consult the high school sites themselves instead of the the website that is attached to the activity that's there. So, all right, so Bremen and Monroe area. 
let's re that we will um, <clears throat> figure out what is what it looks like involving uh, the calendar. So uh, we are in yeah April twenty third. So we have to go all the way down to April twenty third and see what it looks like here. Do we have the April twenty third matchup even? Uh, progress reports and physicals and uh, baseball. Okay, so girls soccer, six o'clock start. Okay, so six o'clock start for Bremen and Monroe area. So that one we found out. Uh, Metter and Temple. Let's uh, see if we can figure this one out. And like I said, we're going to the individual high school sites to try to come up with these answers to see if we can come up with when they can uh see what's going on here so announcements and today being today it is the 23rd so slide the schedule and maybe if i have to turn the schedule sideways will you behave yes you will okay so schedule five five o'clock kick for temple at metter so five o'clock in the afternoon temple at metter so that one has been solved uh camden county Let's see if we can get Camden County worked out. I know that this is kind of a very slow way of doing this, but uh, this might be the only way that we can figure out how many of these start times are a little different because of all of the travel and such. So uh, school news, honor schools, things like that. Uh, okay, so athletics calendars okay so now we are in the athletic calendar for camden county high school all right so um if i could zoom into this particular calendar i would and i could tell you what's going on uh girls soccer hillgrove 530 so camden county is at hillgrove 530 kick they are well on their way here yeah they probably left after breakfast this morning so uh there's that one and then probably Ryan and Lamar can be a little later in the afternoon. Towns County and Christian Heritage. Uh, let's see if Towns County has a particular. Uh, let's see if the folks in, in Hiawassee have a start time listed for all of this. And let's see. Do we have a schedule? Do we have a schedule? Do we, do we, do we? Uh, athletics. I hit the right button. At least I had that. Uh, all right. So if you are traveling, then here's what I need to do. And like I said, I apologize for doing it this way, but because of so many start times being all over the place, it was uh, I'm trying to figure out how to get it done. Okay. So all team schedule, Towns County at Christian Heritage. And, well, that's not correct. Events are added by the athletic staff, so that, that's not correct. There is an there is an event this week. Uh, girls soccer, varsity. I hit girls soccer. I hit varsity. So there we go. Okay, uh, hosting the first round of the tournament, and we do not appear to have an update on the Towns County schedule. But I would say, uh, legitimately, uh, as an educated guess in all of these that it would be 5 to 5.30, so consult your school and consult your schedule, and uh, then we can uh, get uh, adjusted and figure out all of the uh, all of the matchups uh, as we go forward. But uh, that'll do it for today's live. And Shooter, thanks for uh, dropping by. Uh, this, is, this is an entirely different show. We have not been on since 9 o'clock this morning. We have not done a four-hour show. But uh, we'll be back in. Uh, tomorrow, once again, in the noon hour, we'll go over the uh, odd-numbered boys matchups, and we'll let you know what's going on around the state. So uh, thanks to the coaches who came by, uh, preview on the matchup, Ryan Burkhart, Vince Hayes for North Gwinnett and Mill Creek. Uh, hoping everything is going well with uh, uh, Coach Thomas and uh, what's going on in his household. He's uh, got some folks that are under the weather, and so he's helping take care of them. And so when we can catch up with Coach Thomas, we will, and uh, get you uh up and running with what's going on with River Ridge, one of the top five teams in the country on the boys' side. So we're looking forward to all of that. So for all of us here at SDH, that's another go round of Soccer's in Session presented by our friends at Kaiser Permanente. Remember tonight, soccerdownhere.mixler.com on our Mixler site. Download the Mixler app. Go to us on the web, soccerdownhere.com. 
www.mixler.com. And you can listen to the live game with uh, North Gwinnett and Mill Creek. That'll be tonight. And then later uh, later in the week, uh, planning to be down with our friends in Perry with uh, Trinity Christian and Perry on Thursday. But tonight, 7 o'clock on the network, either on the Mixler app or at soccerdownhere.mixler.com. It is North Gwinnett hosting Mill Creek. First uh, is round number two of uh, the 7A girls. And so we got all of the odd-numbered uh, girls matchups going tonight. We'll keep an eye on all the uh, Jason, Maddie, and myself will be there at Tom Robinson Memorial Stadium giving you all of the stuff. It's the official term. So uh, for everybody here at SDH, thanks for hanging out with us for yet another hour of uh, Soccer's In Session Live presented by our friends at KP Georgia on X, the 280-character app, or if you still call it Twitter. So thanks for hanging out with us. It's another go-round of the show. We'll see you tonight at Tom Robinson for Mill Creek and North Quinnette. Be safe, everybody. Mucha plot to y'all. It is the end of the show. That means I get to do this.